here. Hallelujah. We're glad you're here. You know what? I know pastor's got a burning message today, so let's get praying. Let's get worshiping and set the atmosphere exactly where God wants it to be. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for bringing us into your house today, God. We thank you, God, for all that is going taking place. We thank you, God, that we're alive at this time, God, that we can see the things that are going on. God, we ask you to touch each and every person, not only in this place today, but across the airwaves, our media members, and those that are tuning in today. God, touch them in the, wherever they're at. God, touch Brother Zach in the choir. And God, let everything that takes place be exactly what you would have today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Brother Zach and the choir. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Is there a hallelujah in the house? Is there a hallelujah in the house? Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. We got some warriors in here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be here today? Yeah. Uh, some are still stretching and getting and waking up. Are you glad to be in the house of God today? Just before we get started in our worship this morning, I just have one thing to declare. God is up to something. And it's going to be great. God is up to something. And it's going to be great. He's going to change your thinking, your every thought. He's going to change your speaking, your every word. He's turning things around on your behalf. God is a And it's going to be great. How many believe that tonight? How many believe that today? How many believe it in your heart? How many believe it in your soul? How many believe it in your mind? God is up to something. And it's going to be great. Yeah. God is up to something And it's going to be great Hallelujah So since we know the Lord is up to something How many won't stop your praise? You won't stop your worship You won't stop your adoration unto the Father You won't stop your hallelujah you won't stop your thank you, Jesus. says this, you are God and you're in control, feed it high, you're the Lord of all, great I am, sovereign ruler, lion of Judah, you are God, you are God and you're in control, seated it high, you're the Lord of all. Great I am, sovereign ruler, lion of Judah. You are God, you are God, and you're in control. Yeah, seated high, you're the Lord of all. Great I am, lion of Judah, lion of Judah. You are God. Clap your hands. He's 
the great Jehovah. You are God and you're in control. Seated high, you're the Lord of all. Great I am, sovereign ruler, lion of Judah. You are God. Things will change when we call on that name. Great Jehovah. Will change when we call on that name. Great Jehovah, things will change when we call on that name. Great Jehovah, oh, great Jehovah, you're good and we won't stop praying. Great Jehovah, pray. Jehovah, you're good and we won't stop praising. Great Jehovah, great Jehovah, you're good and we won't stop praising. Great Jehovah, you're good and we won't stop praising. Say it again, great Jehovah. You say it. Break the home.
Jehovah. Great Jehovah. You're good and we won't stop praising. Say it again now. Great Jehovah. You're good and we won't stop praising. 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 Celebrate the Lord. Say, and we won't stop praying. Great Jehovah, great Jehovah. You're good, and we won't stop praying. One more time, say, great Jehovah, great Jehovah. You're good. You're good, and we won't stop praying. If you don't stop, give him glory right now. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, if you're not going to stop, give him glory right there. Yeah. Oh, oh. He is good. His mercy endureth forever. Yes. Uh, How many know that he is good in his mercy? It endures through all generations. Yes, yeah, some of you got your hands lifted. Come on, let's all do it. Can we all lift up our hands before Father? How many know that the Lord himself delivered you out of the hands of the enemy. Oh yeah, I got a few witnesses. You know that he delivered you out of the hand of the enemy. So God, we thank you for that. Song came to mind on my way to service this morning. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never going back. I don't know what your testimony is, but you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life And I'm never going back You have rescued my life Yes, Lord I didn't deserve it But you have rescued my life and I'm never, never going, going back. And my response is hallelujah. You're my redeemer. Hallelujah. My response.
see you say it. You have. myself for a second listen I was that I was that guy that was a hothead I you couldn't tell me anything I I didn't know everything but I figured everything and the Lord began to chastise me and he says Zach you got to watch your response I know I'm the only one And we go to God and we get so caught up in our situations. We get so caught up in the problem and we, we say, but, but God, but God, you don't understand. God, you don't see them. God, you know I just really am so passionate about you and I want this and I got to have that. But God says, your response, how do you respond? I've made you more than conquerors. How are you going to respond? I have made you a winner. How are you going to respond? Yes. I brought you out of this. How are you going to respond? So my, my question to you is today is, what is your response? I realize that everything in your life may not be going well. You may have some tears. You may have some concerns. You may have some hurts. You may have some pain. But do you have a hallelujah while you're going through? Do you have a hallelujah in the midst of your tears? I wonder, what is your response? My response is hallelujah. You are You're my redeemer. Hallelujah. done it in your life. You have rescued my life. And I never and I'm never going back. 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 And I'm never 
deserve it, but you, you have rescued my life. And I'm never, and I'm never going back. It's a struggle right now, but you have, you have rescued my life. I got some concerns, but you, you have rescued my life. And I'm never. And I'm Hallelujah. 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 I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long as I Cause my response is Hallelujah My response is Hallelujah My response is Hallelujah Our response is We love you Our response is Lord I love you Come on I dare you to give him a response Come on he responds to you so respond to him. Come on, he responds to you. Respond to him. My response is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're my redeemer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No music. You have rescued my life. Say it. You have rescued my life. And I never, and I'm never going back. Just a kick. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. Yeah. You have rescued my life And I'm never, and I'm never going back 
if you remember where you are. And I'm never, and I'm never going back. And I'm never, and I'm Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Never going back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to ask our ushers to come this morning. Hallelujah. I want you to stay in a mind of worship this morning. Hallelujah. 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 We serve a mighty God today, don't we? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, God, for all that you're doing already, God. We thank you for the spirit that we feel in this place. God, as we receive this tithe and offering today, God, we ask that you be used for the work of your kingdom to take your word around the world today, God. God, we give you praise and honor in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to stand, remain standing today as they come past you. And in just a moment, our pastor, Pastor Henry Schaefer, is going to come and minister today. Just continue to worship the Lord. Amen. the Lord shout amen. amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house in. Okay, that's a hand clap. Now we're going to give him our best. Come on, give him your best. Now give him your best. Hey! Come on, give him your best. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Somebody say, that's my best there now. God bless you. You may be seated there for a moment. Good to see everybody here today. God bless you. This is a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. Somebody shout amen. amen. Everybody's looking good out there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I do want to give our sound people a, a hand clap back here in the back. They're running. I got... 
run a little short today. Thank you so much for all that y'all do. Very, very thankful for all that y'all do there in the back. Thank you, Jesus. Who's ready to begin? See, um, as we begin, you know, everybody asks me, they say, what about when you get up there and ready to preach all this stuff? You ever get kind of worried or you ever kind of get kind of what have you? I say, every time. Because if you think that, if you don't think that, well, you trust it in yourself is all I can say. Because I, I'm really not sure what's all going to be said. I'm really not sure how we're going to get to where we need to get at, but we're going to get there somehow. Amen. So I have a lot to share with you. I don't have a lot of notes taken. I've been putting it together. God's been speaking to me over the last, well, the last few weeks, months, about what's happening, where we're at, what's, what's going on. And if you look at the things that's happening in the world, I'm not sure. I mean, some people are totally oblivious to what's going on around us. Uh, that's even in the church. You see, uh, we got a little puppy over here. Hold Dolly up over here. Are y'all listening to me? Hold Dolly up over here. They ain't even listening to me. Dolly's got more spiritual discernment than most pastors has got. Did y'all hear what I just said? She knows enough to, mark, to bark when a demon's around. She knows something isn't right. She's a little demon terrorist. Yeah. She knows something isn't right. A lot of people in the world don't know something's not right. A lot of people in the church don't understand what's going on either. So I want to talk to you today on the theme the Lord's given me. I don't know how even we're going to uh, title it. I guess the best way to title it, I want to talk to you about signs. I want to talk to you about signs. We're going to talk to you about the, the eclipse that's coming. Uh, is, when is it happening, everybody? So what's that? Yes, yeah, tomorrow. Well, it could be Monday. Tomorrow, Monday. Things are getting ready to happen. We could talk to you about World War III, the possibility of it. There's a lot of things that we can talk about today. And so what I'm going to do is uh, just share with you things that I believe the Lord has shown me out of Scripture and where we're at and what's happening all around us. Now, there's going to be times, and I could go ahead and say it right here at the beginning, there's going to be some things that... Um, if you don't like me now, you surely aren't going to like me when you get through. I can tell you that. Because somehow I just have a way of rubbing the devil wrong. You know, I just have a way of doing that. And I have a way of offending the enemy. You know, the Bible says that the truth will offend. Right? Right? So I don't want to start off in the spirit of offense to begin with. But I'm just letting you know we might go through a dark period here in just a little bit. And you'll get that on the way home. Somebody shout amen. amen. Won't you stand with me at the reading of God's word. I put it over here in Genesis chapter 1 in verse 14. I'm going to do this real slow today. Hopefully that somebody will go back and listen to it. Especially between now and tomorrow. Or in time to come, you will listen to this and say, this is what he was talking about. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. And the Lord said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs. Someone say signs. And for seasons. And for days. And for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light of, of, upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Father, we love you. Thank you for today. Thank you for your blessings. And as we minister this word, signs, signs of the time, where are we at, what's going on. Father, I pray that you help me be effective to deliver the information that the people would need here. Lord, as a spokesman, 
I pray, Father, that I will deliver the message in the fullness of the gospel and the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And everything that we say here will be done according to your purpose and your plans. Father, let this be a sign to people who will listen. I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. That red light back there in the back means that we're live and we're broadcasting over the Internet. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house. Welcome them in. Everybody, welcome in our listeners. All those who are tuned in. Is the low country here today? Some of them here, some of them there? Some of them, they're both places. Welcome in our low country, FRA church, low country. God bless you. Welcome them in. If you would, everybody, thank you, Jesus. Those who are listening all over the United States, thank you for being tuned in. Those who are part of the um, media membership for the University of Parkway Church of God, we welcome you in as well. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Jesus. You ready to begin? Might be a a rocky road today. Don't get offended at me. Somebody shout amen. Amen. You see, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14, you're going to see God set in the heavens the greater light and the lesser light, the sun and the moon. It was to be for a certain thing, signs. When we're talking about signs, there are things that God shows us by signs. And he lets us know that he wants to get our attention through signs. Sometimes we're asking questions. It's the sign that will give the answer to what God is showing us. I got it written here in my Bible here. When it talks about it that he set the night uh, and for signs and for seasons and days and years, in Genesis chapter 1, 14 to 16, is when God created time. At that moment, when he created it, he created time. And we are captured inside time. God is outside of time. That's why God says, believe you receive when you pray, and you shall have it, because he's not in time. He's outside of time, watching us trapped in time. So believe you receive when you pray, and you shall have it. So here you will find, this is when God created time. There's other times in the Bible, when you look at Jesus sharing with us what's going to happen in the last days. Now, upon us, tomorrow will be the great American uh, eclipse of October the 8th, 2024. And we're going to experience that here on the earth. So you have to ask yourself, is God doing this for signs? Is he showing us anything? So let's just take a moment. There are many people who believe that you shouldn't even preach about this or you shouldn't even talk about it. Now, if we, uh, and of course, we have radio shows and radio programs, and this would be a good talk program and a good talk show to talk about. And, and, and most appropriately, a lot of times, things like this here is best to be left in a talk show, such as, this is the first time you're going to hear me say it, flat earth, round earth discussion should be left to a talk show to where you can discuss those type of things at, to where you understand why. And and again, many times why Pastor Schaefer does not get involved with things, because I have studied that issue for years before it was ever discussed. And I've done many shows on it. And I think, Dana, you might have been in there with us when we did it as well. So there's a lot of things that are left, you ready, for discussion, but not presented from a pulpit or in a media app type thing. That makes sense? That's, listen here. This is an old man who has experience. Understand? Truth, every bit of it is worthy to discuss, but discuss it in such a way that when we talk about signs, you don't get offended, and that's what I'm getting ready to do right here. I'm going to share with you some things that I think is pertinent, but in the middle of this, I'm going to share with you some very things that might be in the very dark spot of your life that you don't like what I'm going to say. But it needs to be said now because it's part of what we're talking about. That makes sense. So when we're talking about this, Jesus, if you, if you want to know about signs and if you want to know what's happening in the last days, Jesus is the one who spoke to us more about 
when and what to look for when he's going to come and how it's going to be in the last days. Jesus said more about it in the Word than any other person about what to look for. John the Revelator, the book of Revelation, is a book that speaks to you about this here, is, what, is what's going to happen. Jesus gives you the insight of leading up to the event, how you can tell when this getting ready for this seven years of tribulation, and you're in it, this is what you're going to get. That's John. Jesus leads us up to that point. So if you want to know where we're at and what's going on, you need to listen to Jesus. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to, you understand? So if you didn't come to church, you didn't get anything, Jesus spoke about the end time more than anyone else, than John the Revelator, and it is after the fact. J J the book of Revelation tells you what you're going to get into if you stay here. Jesus says you can look up to the look for my return, and you can miss it if you want to. That's what I'm here to tell you about. I don't understand what we're saying here. So let's talk about what Jesus said here then in the uh, Olivia Discourse here. It's in Matthew 24. We're going to try to bring it over here in just a little bit. Matthew 24. You can write, if you're taking notes, I hope you do, because you surely can re remember all of this. And look here. If you think that Genesis chapter 1 was the first scripture I'm going to talk about, oh, you messed up. That's just to get you started. Somebody shout, man, this is for everybody who says, Pastor, don't use the scriptures. Well, we're going to mess you up today. Look at it here, Matthew 24, verses 1 to 5. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon the other, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Now tell us, when shall these things be? Isn't that great? When, when they ask the questions, Jesus doesn't run from the questions. He answers the questions, and look what he says here. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So we know there's going to be signs, and they ask for that sign. Give us the sign. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. That's one of the signs that you could definitely know that deception will run abound in the last days. Deception's everywhere, especially on that Internet. And I want you to understand on that Internet, everything that you see on that Internet is already scrubbed. They only let out what truth they'll let out. It's already scrubbed. Do you understand what I just said? It's already scrubbed. It's what the globalists will allow to be out. It's already scrubbed. Understand that. So wait, why am I telling you that? So you will not be deceived. And there's so much out there that you really don't know what is truth. Look at what he says here. And Jesus says, take, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they shall. There you go. You're, there it is. What is it? You see it right there? Now, when he says, I am Christ, if I stood up here and I told you that I was Christ, that would be, I, I, I'm, de I'm a deceiver. But that's not what he's meaning there. Say, Pastor, what is he meaning? He's saying, many will come in my name representing that I am, the, I am representing what Christ would have us to say. See what I mean? Listen to me. I follow Christ. I walk just like Christ does. Follow me. Follow me. I walk just like him. And that's what he's talking about. Because if they just came and said, I, 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 I'm Christ, that wouldn't deceive anybody because we already know that, don't we? But now if you just come to church, there's a lot of people that says, follow me, I'll show you. See, there are people in church right now that they'll tell you that they're, they're following Christ. And when you come to church, the women sit on this side with their head wrapped and there are men who sit on this side right here, and they are there sitting in suits. The women look like they're old, and that nobody, and, and that they are just uh, like it would be back in the day. And the men sit here, and they look like they just came out of, just out of GQ magazine. You see, and you're going to follow a church like that? You're going to say, just because I see people getting baptized in the name of Jesus, and people flocking to that from all over the world? 
and you're going to say that that's God? I'm telling you, that's not God. That's bondage. Did you hear what I say? That's bondage. To tell you what you can wear and what you can't wear. To tell you and to how long your hair can be. You can't put nails on your face. That's bondage, brothers and sisters. Hey, don't, hey, don't let no man deceive you. I don't care about the big crowds. I'm just telling you what it is. There's deception will abound. Now, see, that's part of what I wasn't going to say, and if that is part of your dark spot, well, I just put some light on it. Somebody shout amen. amen. So here's what he says here. He tells us what the signs will be. He says, um, for nation, verse 7, you shall, verse 6, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end's not yet. So when you see this, the wars and the rumors of wars, what would that tell you? The end's not yet. The end's not yet, but we must be getting pretty close because it's a sign. See what I'm getting at? For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes. Someone say earthquakes in diverse places. Now, I'm going to share something with you later on about earthquakes as I'm sitting in there in my office. A revelation the Lord gave me to give to the body of Christ. <laughs> that I've never heard anybody say. It's going to mess you up like it messed me up. So because there's earthquakes that happens all the time. There's earthquakes that happen all the time. They're all around us. But when you look at this here, so there's going to be earthquakes, and these are the beginning of sorrows. They shall deliver you up to be afflicted, killed. They'll hate you by all nations for my name's sake. And, be, and, be, and then shall many be offended at you. You can almost say that's what's happening in Israel right now. They're going to be offended at you, Israel. And they shall betray one another. They shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall arise. They will deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I expect a falling away of the church before Jesus comes. And I believe you're already seeing that. And God is changing the wood out many times. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto the nations, and then shall the end come. So then he goes on to tell us about what we can look for, the abomination of desolation in the temple. Then he goes on to tell us if it was very, in verse 24, if it were possible even that they could receive, deceive the very elect. It will be good in the back if you could follow. We're going to give you time to call up the scriptures if you can get it. In verse 27, For as lightning cometh from the east to the west, so shall it come the Son of Man be when he comes from the east to the west. Look at this one here, that lightning coming that quick. So when we're talking about Jesus and this event that's happened, he tells us in verse 30, The heavens and the earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. I like what he says here in verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so shall it also be the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days that they were before the flood, they were what? Eating, drinking, marrying. I mean, this is, oh, you're, I'm going to get it to the back. It's, it's Matthew 24 and verse 36. Verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so shall it also be the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days of Noah, they were doing what? Eating, drinking, marrying, giving marriage, until the Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not what, someone say, when the flood, someone say flood. flood. When the flood came, then shall it be two taken in the field. This is the signs that Jesus gives us of the things that can happen. Uh, in the last days. Look at in the, in, uh, the Olivet Discourse. He also speaks to us about it in Luke 21. Let's look at it over here, Luke 21, and you can pull it all up in the back, but I'm going to hit verse 5 to begin with. Luke 21, you ready, everyone? Remember I said Jesus talked about it more than anyone. Study the scriptures. Luke 21, verse 5. And some spake unto him the temple how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts. Now, the reason why we're looking at several, uh, the same verses in different Gospels is because he tells us more information in each one of these. So just reading one, you're not going to get it all. That's why there's more in here. It's like, it's like me 
and Fran and Dolly going from here to Atlanta. We go there and we come back. I tell the story of what I saw because we were driving. Fran tells the story of what she was seeing riding as passenger, and Dolly just remembers the times we stopped. But we tell the same story. We've been to the same place, but we tell different things. That's why you have the Gospels. Same thing, different stories. Somebody shout amen. amen. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, and some of these things which we behold, the days will come, in the which there shall not be left one stone upon the other, and everything will be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? What, and what sign will be there given to these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that you be not deceived. You see it again, everyone? For many shall come in my name. Uh, and the time draws near, when they say, I'm Christ, go ye not there for after them. Therefore, after them. But when ye shall hear of the wars and commotions. Now, well, look at that one there. Someone say commotions. You see what I'm getting at? Be not terrified at the commotions. For these things must come first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Are we up here? Then he said, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in divers. Do you know I have to say it because I know this is an old version of the Bible, but for those who are reading this here, divers means many. Anytime you see divers, it means many in King James. I asked one this one person, they asked me, said, what does divers mean? I said, it means many. They said, we thought that it meant that it was uh, like people who were in the water and divers would go down and see the earthquakes down in the bottom of the water. I said, no, that got nothing to do with it. Diver means many. Somebody shout amen. And famines, divers places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs Shall there be where? 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 From heaven. So the, I'm saying I'm building it really slow to give you a foundation of why I'm going to say what I'm going to say. But there, but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogue and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it, therefore, in your hearts, not to meditate, therefore, what you shall answer. And we go on down here. Now we're going to pick it up at verse 24. Look at this one here in 24. He's telling about it. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall lead away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. In your Bible... Write down next to this in your Bible, 1967. Uh, did y'all bring a Bible? 1967. Luke 21, 24 was fulfilled in 1967. The fullness of the Gentiles of Jerusalem was trodden down under their feet. This is what happened. And look at verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And, it sh and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. So he's telling us everything that you could expect before you're going to see Jesus. Now, the purpose is you've got to realize, when do you think Jesus is coming? This is where a lot of people are at. They're saying, well, I don't think Jesus is going to come for another 7 years, 20 years, 50, or 100 years. I'm saying, take heed that no man deceive you. Somebody shout amen. amen. It's a lot closer than what you think because in 1967, when it was returned to Israel, Jerusalem returned to the nation of Israel, in May 14, 1948, and they became a nation. That was another sign. A nation born in a day. And he says, that generation will not pass till they see the Son of Man come. 
So if you were born in 1948 or around that time frame, look at what he's saying. Pastor Henry's going to see Jesus come. I was born in 56. He's coming back. You best get, it, get ready. Those people who were 10 years older than me, that have been 46. You see what I'm getting at? And a lot of those here are just hanging on. They're going to see Jesus come. Did you hear what I just said? Now, I'm not setting the time. I'm just saying when you look at these signs, you know that things are happening all around us. So don't, just, don't go from here and think that God doesn't speak to us through signs because he does. Look at what he says in Luke 17 and verse 26. Did I read that one? Look at what he says here. Luke 17 and 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be at the coming of the Son of Man. They did eat and drink and married wives and were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them. Someone say, likewise. Do you not hear me say, if you're going to study the scriptures, the word so likewise, circle it. And that tablet, circle likewise. Because God is hinging a truth. He said, just like it was with them, it's going to happen just like this one here. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat and drink and brought and sold and planted and builded. But, someone say, but, remember I told you, circle, circle, circle. The same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Look at that. It's going to happen just like that. But now I want you to understand, Jesus gives us a lot more information here. And here's something I want to tell you. Is that when you see what destroyed the world at the time of Noah... What was it? Someone say the flood. Someone say water. But he didn't say when you see floods. He said, in Noah, he, said, he said, just like it was likewise as it was with Noah. I mean with Lot. What destroyed Lot? Fire. When you start seeing things all around you about floods, water, fire. Look that God, and the, and the thing is, it's not that you can see a flood over there or see fire over there or what have you, but when it's the culmination. It's the coming together. When you see all of these things coming together at one time, here, 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 here. Not that there had been floods and not had there been fires, but they're everywhere. He's, that's what he's trying to show you right there. More frequent, all the time, everywhere you turn. This is how you know. Not that we haven't had bad things. We've always had things like that. The flood and fire and brimstone when those things happen. What happens with fire and brimstone? Tell me about brimstone. What is brimstone? What would, what would it be? Where would we get brimstone from? When a volcano explodes or it, it uh, expels from its throat and it throws up in the air, plumes of smoke and fire and billows out, what rains down is called what? Brimstone. Everybody. I mean, we got, we got a, we've got a volcano. I know it's since, it's since 2021. You need to look at the, the, uh, the earthquake. I mean, the uh, volcano that's in Iceland. So let's talk about 2021. Y'all ready? 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024. Guess what's been happening in Iceland? A volcano is a volcano has it's just been pouring out fire and brimstone and lava for years. Now they have to move the cities. They're scared. You know that. You know that's happening. It's happening now, and it's going everywhere. I think if you read about it now, they'll say it has just recently stopped, but it has been going on and on and on. When you look at all the things that's happening around us, not just a little volcano, in Iceland, this has been a big volcano. Look to the Gospels and look to Revelation. When it's, it's the when aspect for Jesus. The signs of Noah, the signs of Lot. Revelation tells you after it starts, this is what you're going to get. The seal judgments, the trumpet judgment, the bowl judgments. 
That's what you're going to get afterwards. And it's going to be all of this. Look here. When this goes through and the seas are warring, raging, and all of this happens in the tribulation, this is going to be minuscule compared to what happens in the tribulation. It's going to be an awful time. That's why you don't want to be in it. That's why you want to miss it. That's why you want to live like Jesus is coming today. You want to be ready when he's coming. People say, I mean, I'm going to tell you this here. When we were growing up, it was like this here. That we knew that if Jesus came and we weren't living right, we're going to hell. We knew that people going through the tribulation, they are not going to make it. That's how they kept us straight. Man, we would sin like hell all week long, come to church and get saved every Sunday. Because we did not want to miss it. Somebody shout amen. Some of you live like sin and hell all week long, you still don't repent. I'm telling you what, you know where you're going to have your time to repent at? It's going to be in the tribulation. Because there's going to be a lot of people in the church who's going to go through this thing. But those who are overcomers, in Revelation 2, 3, you're going to see, to him that overcomes... What did I say? To him that overcomes. He's going to have you miss all this stuff. That's coming. I know this don't hit, fit your theology all that well, but that's just the way it is. So when we look at where are we at and what's taking place on the scale of the end time. So Jesus said these things are going to be wars and rumors of wars. Now, when we're talking about, well, then show us when the war is going to happen. Well, what happened there in 70 A.D., when Jesus said the temple's going to be destroyed. So he's there about 32 A.D. He's telling them about, they're sitting up there like eating a sandwich. They're looking out over the Mount of Olives, looking down over to Jerusalem and the temple. It's called the Olivet Discourse. That means they're sitting up there eating a sandwich. They're talking. It's the cool of the day. Under a tree, a fig tree. <sniffs> Sitting there. Lord, tell us when all these things are going to be. He says, you're not going to see one stone left upon the other. That temple set nether, that beautiful temple you're looking at right there is going to be destroyed. They said, but Lord, when is this going to be? He says, take heed that no man deceive you. It also talks about in, in, in this here that they start seeing Jerusalem surrounded talks about when they see Jerusalem surrounded by the enemy, they need to get out. Well, what happened in 70 A.D. that the Romans came and they surrounded Jerusalem and they put a big old ditch all the way around it that nobody could get in and nobody could get out. Only those who could get out could do what, would, would do what? Remember what Jesus said. When you see Jerusalem surrounded, the temp, time of the temple is coming. So there's many people who got out, who listened. The rest, the temple was destroyed. They burnt the temple with fire, and they scraped up the gold that was on the temple ground, and they took it as booty back home with them. That's what happened, and that's what Jesus was saying. So you need to, you know, this will make a good talk show, wouldn't it? So this is the kind of things I would talk to you about in a talk show. It makes good preaching, too, because it's truth. Somebody shout amen. amen. So when you're looking at this war, when's when it going to happen? Well, all along, it's happening. Many people get, get, uh, speak of the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war. And when we're talking about an Ezekiel 38, 39 war, we're talking about a time when major players in the Middle East will come together and they will come against Jerusalem. Now, these major players are people like this here. Just say this black box right here is Jerusalem. The major players in the scripture are a little further away than those who are real close. The real close guys are all around them are border states or border countries. The big players that we're talking about are further away. But they got their eye on Jerusalem. They got their eye on the Jews. Because of the religious fanaticism of, of Muslims, who claim the Temple Mount, they guard that Temple Mount. They guard it. And they don't want... You, you, you know this here? When you go over to Jerusalem and you go over there as, as a steward, I mean as a person to go in, I'm going to say by and large, most of them don't even like Christians to be there. But they like your money.
The Muslims don't want you there. The Jews don't want you there. The Jews want you there for the protection of Israel. But what did I just say? Even in the Jewish people, there are very few Orthodox Jews. Most of them are secular Jews who are tied to mammon. That's the only reason why they let you come. But these border states there that are around them hate Israel as well because they say it's their land. So let's tell you about real simple Ezekiel 38 because you're going to study that and you're going to find out that in the scriptures, right before Jesus comes, there's going to be a war that's going to happen. And in this war that will happen, you ready? I'm going to do it like this here. You're going to get Iran will attack. Russia will attack. Turkey will attack. Egypt will attack. Ethiopia will attack. Saudi Arabia will attack. When you hear them speaking right now on the news that there is war, war three possibility, and because of what we just did a few days ago, that there was a um, Israel bombed in Syria, Damascus. They killed two generals through a, dr a, dr a drone strike. See, first of all, the Bible tells us about Damascus will become a ruinous heap. What was it Isaiah 17? Someone shared with me about that. Isaiah 17, I think verse 1, uh, that says that Damascus becomes a ruinous heap. Do, you, do your phone. Pictures of Damascus today. It's a ruinous heap. So when we hear bombing going on in, on in Damascus, when you hear more strikes, you listen to what I'm trying to tell you. This old man... When I hear Damascus in the news, it's not good. And they're doing things, and they're bombing Damascus, and they just did a drone strike, and they killed two generals of Iran. Iran said, we will strike back. Within two weeks, we will strike back. You know, we're still in the two weeks. We're in it. And they're saying on the news, is this World War III? It's like this here. When they make a threat, how they strike back, I don't know, but they're going to strike back. And they don't, they don't just going to strike back there. They're going to strike back here. Did you hear what I said here? You need to be aware. I mean, what do you think? We're just going to sit at home and think about this stuff ourselves? Take heed that nobody deceives you. It's happening all around you. I mean, we just came back from um, a, 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 a meeting we had up in Virginia. And there are people that we know were, they were in the Navy. They're all being called out. Forces everywhere. They're saying, get your house in order. You will not be back for months. And we're talking about months. They're sending them all out across the world. All along here, they're telling you everything is fine. I'm talking to the people who are on the ships. They say, they're telling us to get our things in order. We're going out. We're not coming back. We don't know how long it'll be us coming back. Because they're, America is spread thin across the world. Word about China? I know you're not. You're not even concerned. And another thing is that we have a president that allows that southern border and the world and, um, to be open and flying communist Chinese into our country and allowing them to come here. He's been bought out. He sold, out to, he sold us out. He has sold us out. Who was the one that sold Jesus out? Who? Judas. Been sold out for money. Oh, that probably hit that dark spot. You didn't like what I said. Isn't that right? You didn't like that, did you? It's true, though. If you have no borders, you have no country. Okay, so let's do this one here. 
So here's what's happening in Ezekiel 38, 39 war. They will come together. These big nations, listen, they will, I'm going to give you what the Bible says about it. They come together in Ezekiel 38 and 39 war. They come, there comes, it says an evil thought will come into Russia's mind. And they will come down and they will take a thought. Let's go down to the city that is unwalled. And they will come down to Russia, I mean come down to Jerusalem. And guess why they're coming? They know why they're coming. They're coming for one thing. They're coming for the mineral and resources that are in Israel. Some of the largest oil reserves are where? In Israel. They found them. And they're coming for them. Iran, because of the religious background, is coming. They're going to come to take the Temple Mount. Russia's coming down. All of these people are coming in to destroy this, this nation. And when they come down to destroy the nation, all of a sudden what God is going to do, he is going to rain out of heaven great hailstones, great earthquakes. And all these nations who come together, Ezekiel 38 and 39, what will happen at that moment in time, their armies will be destroyed and one-sixth of the armies that come against them will be left. That's, and the whole world's going to be messed up. This is why it will be very easy for people during the tribulation period to make peace with who? Israel. Because they defeated many of their armies. And they will come together and they will set up a one world government that the Antichrist will be over. Listen here. This Ezekiel 38, 39 war on my Facebook page when it said World War III, I'm thinking, I'm putting, the, I'm, look here. I'm connecting the dots in Pastor Henry's, in his, in his theology. Here's the connection right here. It's happening right now around us. But before the Ezekiel 38 war, Somebody says, I want to know what's going to happen here. There is in theology a war that will happen. It's called the Psalm 83 conflict. A war. Y'all want to go look at that? Are you, do you want to know what's going to happen? Look at it here in Psalm 83. In Psalm 83, there's a war that happens. Is that still in your Bible, everybody? Psalm 83. Oh, there it is right there. Y'all want to look at it? I'm going to read it slow. That's for all of you who say, I'm not going to give you the Bible. Psalm 83. Have I went too long already? Oh, we haven't got to the good stuff yet. Look what he says in Psalm 83. Keep thou not silence, O God. Hold not thy peace. And be not still, O God. For lo, listen here. Now listen, I'm going to set this reading up with this information. On October the 7th, 2023, Hamas came up through the walls and out of tunnels into Israel. They killed thousands. They raped, killed men and women, those who were in their safe rooms. I want to tell you what a safe room is. Just say you pick one of these rooms up in this house, in this church here, we're going to call that a safe room. So you run to your safe room. In the, amid, in the midst of. And people were in their safe rooms. They took hand grenades and blew the doors open, bust through the walls of the safe rooms, and killed the people while they were in their safe rooms. They killed babies. They raped men and women. They cut their heads off by the thousands. They took captive, hostages, drug them back across the wall through the fences and back into the tunnels. And still today, they have hostages in those tunnels somewhere. Now, here's what I want to tell you this here. If that was to happen here in America, well, our president probably wouldn't do anything. Our president probably wouldn't do anything. What's supposed to happen is that someone will rise up and go get the hostages. 
go in there and get them and bring them back and set a plan up to wipe out our enemy, not seek peace with our enemy. There is no peace. There is no peace. There is righteous retribution that you see. Even God does that in the Bible. Now, I'm not saying that I will do that. I'm just letting you know this is the way it should be. And that's exactly what Israel has done. If you come in and you take Sister Schaefer and you drag her into the tunnel and got my children in there with you, I'm coming in. I don't care how many people I got to come in past it. I don't care. You give her up or I'm coming in. You give her up or I'm coming in. You can, stay, you can go all across the world and say you shouldn't be that. You give it up and I'm coming in. You understand what I just said? That's the way we're going to do this thing. That's the way it should be. Now, what's happening on October the 7th, 2023, this is what happened. That started a conflict, a commotion. But here's what I want to tell you. In 2018, God gave me a dream. And I was pushed forward into time of the year 2023. And it was a dark period. It was a dark time. Go back and watch it. They interviewed me. Everybody, what's coming, what's coming? I said, I don't know what's coming. But it's going to be bad. It's not going to be good. So January, we looked. February, March, April, May, June, what's coming? This is not it. July, August, September, October the 7th, that was the dream. It was terrible. God, see, God gives dreams not just so for America. He gives them for his people. So you can pray for his people. You think it's all about you. You think it's all about you. It's all about Jesus. Who was he talking to? Who was he talking to? Now, of course, we get grafted into this. But you always look back where? You don't look in, in America, you look at what's happening where? In Israel. We're part of them now. Everything is going to be where? There. So when God gives us signs here, you don't look here, you look where? This is what you got to understand. Am I preaching or this make a good talk show as well? Good talk show, good preaching. So, because of what has happened, and now they have, went, they have found miles and miles and miles of tunnels that are still under Israel. They're under the West Bank. They're, I mean, they're under the West Bank. They're under Israel. They're everywhere. And they're trying to find out what's going on. And, pe and they're using, Hamas is using people. They're cowards. They use you and children and hospitals so that you won't bomb them. You need to listen to some real talk shows where Israel has said, on this date, on this time, we are going to bomb that place right there. And they send out, they send out leaflets. They put it over the airways. We're going to drop a bomb at University Parkway at 12 o'clock. Now, you can be a dummy and sit in here at 12 o'clock. Did you hear what I just said? And that's exactly what they're doing, so don't let nobody lie to you. The media is lying to us. And whatever, whatever group you're listening to is messed up. They don't have the biblical foundation to be able to even be a commentator on a show. I wouldn't invite none of them to sit down and talk with me. If they want to interview me, but they don't know enough about what's going on to tell me anything. Did you hear what I just said? So you need to be aware that no man deceives you either. Wow. Boy, he's crazy today, isn't he? Someone say, do not look at your watch. Say it, do not look at your watch. I didn't go on another 30 minutes of singing. 
so I could preach today. Psalm 83, you ready? Keep not thou silent, O God, and, and hold not thou peace, and be not still, O God. You need to put it up, Psalm 83. For lo, thy enemies take a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They've come across the border. They come through the wall. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against the hidden ones. Who are the hidden ones? Somebody shout amen. They had said, they said here, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. And the, same, and the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. Isn't this crazy what we're saying here? Read it. It's crazy, isn't it? I can see how it makes people offended already. It's tough sitting under this. It's tough sitting under truth. Because you ain't heard nothing yet. Somebody shout amen. amen. You ain't going to like this. They had said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. And the name of Israel may be no more remembrance. For they have consulted together in one consent. They are a confederate against us. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites and Moabites and the Hagarines. We go all the way down. In verse 12, and the said, who said, let us take to ourselves the house of God in possession. Now, for, as, as I'm saying this here, I'm going, I'm going to slow it down to let you know that if you come to our Wednesday night classes, which are not broadcast, but you're going to have to come in, you're going to have to get up and get on in here. I'm not going to let you stay at home and try to spoon, spoon feed you with a straw. With a straw. You come sitting there and I'll at least put it in your mouth. But I ain't going to let you suck it from a straw to the house. Someone say, he's tough today, isn't he? You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. So we have someone that we support that are, that's in Israel. Short of saying a name, but don't get nobody in trouble. But... Here's what they said started this. On the Temple Mount, there's a mosque that's there. And one of the Jewish persons would be on the far right. See, I would be considered far right. I would be the right, the religious right. And some people, I hope that I would be in the middle, but concerning our Christianity today, I'd be far right because I believe in casting out demons. Way to the right. What they did is they went to the Temple Mount and was broadcasting there that it's time for us to build the third temple. Listen now, this is being broadcast in Israel. We're going to tear down that mosque and we're going to build the third temple. Brother and sister, brother, listen, that is not the thing to say on the Temple Mount. They don't even let you up there. They got guns. White people can't get there. We have, no, they, you, they only allow you to get up there every now and then to let you get close to get inside that thing. They built a mosque over where the third temple is going to be built at. And before Jesus comes and be the second coming, and when and they talk about the last days, that temple mount, that temple mosque will be destroyed, and they're going to rebuild the third temple there. That's scripture. Right now, there's a rock sitting on top of it. And that man said, we're going to remove that rock and we're going to build what we want there. October the 7th happened. You say you coming for that, we coming for you. You who say you're going to build that temple, we coming for you. Now you ready for what they said? Did that give you some insight on what's happening October the 7th? Let you know from the background. It wasn't because Israel was considered person who uh, a group that had come in and stolen land that's the land of Abraham's somebody shout amen. amen so look at this one here verse 12 they said you got it put up uh, Psalm 83 in verse 12 who said you ready they said we're gonna come and they take counsel against us they're coming the hidden ones they're coming against us 
Who said? You ready? What did they say? Let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. Right there where you say you're going to build it out, we're going to take that thing right there. Everything you got up here, Israel, we're going to wipe you out. Oh, my God. And someone says, Pastor, why do you say, oh, my God, for? Look at verse 13. Psalm 83 in verse 13. Someone say those first three words. Someone say it again. Someone say it again. Ain't that crazy? Oh, my God. Make them like a wheel and ask to stumble before the wind. Verse 14. And as the fire that burneth wood, and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire, so persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put shame and perish that men may know that, that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. Psalm 83, conflict, war. They believe what you're seeing right now is that right there. Did you see that right there? Now, there could be prophetic times when those psalms fit the situation and God uses that as well. Many will say 1967, May 14th, 1948. 1967, October the 7th, 2024. That's what you see right there. Understand? Do you understand? So it's against the, it's the nations now. Remember what I said. Ezekiel 38, 39, are the big countries afar. The Psalm 83 war is with Lebanon, Jordan, the Gaza Strip. Those that border the Psalm 83 war. Understand the difference. I'm trying to teach you this morning. Look for the conflict. Understand the two differences here and what it's over. Is he doing all right, everybody? So let's talk about the signs that God gives us. Let's pick it up. Brother, in the back, I'm going to ask you to do this for me. I got an image I want you to put. Put up image 001, if you would. In 2017, there was an eclipse that came across the earth, America. Very simple. I'm not going to do a lot of teaching. No, it's an image, 001, not a clip. Not a clip, an image. It's just a JPEG file. Here's the thing. Yes, yeah, see, look at this one here. August 21, 2017. Look at the, it'd be your top right, or it would be your top left. Entered in, entered in where? Salem, Oregon. Came all the way down across through Columbia and all, went out Charleston. Okay, and the other one picks up April the 8th, comes up through Mexico, and goes on out the other side. Short of, t d short of doing a whole series, when there is a solar eclipse over a Gentile nation, God is bringing, speaking about judgment. When there is a lunar eclipse over Israel, it means a bad time for Israel. The sun is larger, the moon is smaller. We are the big, Gentiles are the big group, Jews are the small group. God speaks to Gentile nations through the solar eclipses. He speaks to, everybody's looking at me like, this is some crazy stuff here. That's what I'm trying, I'm putting it all together. He speaks to Israel through the lunar eclipses, the, full, the, the, the lunar eclipse. So when it's over Israel, the blood moon's over Israel, God's speaking to them. When it's speaking here to us, 2017, 2014. When did I get the dream? 2018. Just not by coincidence, just understand what's happening. Now, when we talk about this solar eclipse, the next one that's coming, that's coming in... Well, tomorrow, Monday, let's talk about it for a moment. When God gives us these 
signs of what's happening in Israel right now and what's happening in the world. I have to ask you the question, is what's happening tomorrow, is it a sign to the Gentile nation called America? Is God speaking to us? And if you know anything about the Bible, understand he's not talking about you. He's talking to us about whom. So let's understand this here. So when this happened, an earthquake happened, Friday, the April the 5th, at 10.23 a.m., an earthquake happened. It hit Lebanon, New Jersey. It hit at 4... Uh, it hit with a 4.8 magnitude. Somebody say, this is crazy. Immediately, immediately when they said 4.8... God started speaking to me. And, I, you know, and I have learned to do this here. I have learned that most people can't hear God talk anyway. And God's not going to talk because they're not looking for the sign. So you've got to look for the sign. Uh, let, me, let me tell you about it. Can I tell you? We're talking about the 4.8 earthquake, okay? Hold it, ma'am. You've got to hold me. 4.8 earthquake. That's in case I get confused, which I will not. But just in case I say, tell me what I'm talking about. 4.8 earthquake. God speaks to us in signs. So I'm working at Kimberly Clark. I'm the site superintendent. And they're introducing me to all the engineers. This is 21, something like that, 21. I'm going into the little cubicles. There's an engineer there. I walk in and say, Pastor, we want you to meet this man right here. And I look in here and I say, hey, how you doing? And there's a little cubicle right there. He's got an elephant. That's on the, on the shelf right there. I said, oh, man, I said, you like elephants? I like elephants. Look at my office. I like elephants. You know, why, you know what? You know what? Elephants are a lot smarter than, than most animals. Elephants can hear things, know things that's happening when nobody else knows. Just to let you know that. They're just very, they, can, they can hear water in the ground. That's where they know how to dig. Elephant does. The rest of them can't do that. They can't. Anyway, so here's what happens. I said, you like elephants? He goes, yeah, no, not really. He says, but my, my son does. He's been a missionary to, to Africa, South Africa. He believes he's being called there to South Africa. I said, oh, really? I said, well, I like elephants. And then all of a sudden, just as soon as he said that, my phone rang in my pocket right there. It rang, and it had on, on the phone, it said, you ready for it? On this right here, it said South Africa on my phone. Rang on my phone. And the man who's introducing me and said, say this here, do you know somebody? Do you know somebody? From South Africa? From South Africa. I sure do. I said, excuse me a moment. I walked around there. I took the phone call from South Africa. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I come back around. And he says, was that really from I said, yes, man, you saw it right there. And I said, sir, let me tell you what God's trying to show you. So you said your son feels like he's called to a missionary to South Africa. I said, God's showing you a sign that your son is called to South Africa for a missionary. Look for the sign. God uses me a lot in things just like that. It's a sign. You will miss the signs. You're not even aware of them. They're all around you. But if you're looking for the signs, then you've got to be, you've got to be, you've got to be the spiritual person that can recognize signs that God's talking. See, that sign wasn't from me. That sign was for who? To the man who was an unbeliever, that his son was called to the missionary. God gave him a sign. And what he does with that, I don't know. Aren't you glad I stopped and gave you a real sign? And my phone rang from South Africa. And we just said the words. So a 4.8 magnitude earthquake happened in New Jersey. And immediately when that happened, Holy Spirit started talking to me. Here's what he said. I got it on my Facebook. You can see it. I'm going to read it. Major earthquake in Lebanon, New Jersey. See, Lebanon, New Jersey, and it's striking the center of the epic center at 4.8 in Lebanon. Had nothing, it was not a coincidence. If you know what's happened in Israel, Hezbollah in the northern part of Israel 
is lobbing bombs into Gaza, I mean into uh, Nazareth, and into Israel. Lebanon, Hezbollah is bombing Israel now. And when I saw that, I didn't get this from Joseph Z or anybody else. I didn't have to try to figure it out. I didn't have to figure out the sign with the elephant. I didn't have to try to piece it together. It's a sign. Major earthquake in Lebanon, New Jersey. 4.8 magnitude equals 4.8. 4 8, 2024. 4.8 equals the date of tomorrow. I am shaking the earth. I will shake it tomorrow as a sign. 4 slash 8. 24, the date of the eclipse, I'm shaking the nation with signs. Exodus 4, 8. If they don't believe the first sign when he told Moses, they'll believe the second sign I give. This is a prophetic sign to the United States. In the Middle East, Lebanon, Hezbollah is bombing Israel from the north. God is telling us Use what I have given you against you to assist Israel and stop the rockets coming into Israel. Else I will shake your nation till you understand he who touches Israel touches the apple of my eye. And I noticed on the image that this was just north of Washington, D.C. Lebanon, New Jersey is just north of Washington, D.C. It was on the map. And God said, it's, got, it's happening right there. I said, what's going on there? So on, on this here, the United Nations, at that moment in time, was talking about Israel. Do y'all want to know what they said? Do you want to know what they said? Well, let's go over here and let's look at it. I, I asked myself, what was happening at the United Nations when the 4.8 earthquake happened? Janet Soparento had her time declaring to the United Nations the humanitarian needs of the children in the Gaza Strip. You ready? Call. This is United States, UN, calling for a permanent ceasefire resolution. When she opened her mouth and said, we want you, the United Nations to declare a permanent ceasefire, God shook Lebanon, New Jersey, with a 4.8 and said, you don't understand what you're doing. I'll shake this nation. I will shake them all. At the moment while calling for a permanent ceasefire, the 4.8 earthquake hit just north of where she was at in Lebanon, New Jersey. God is not pleased with a permanent ceasefire resolution. Hamas must be eliminated. No more October 7th attacks by Hamas. They will not, you hear me? They will not hold to a permanent ceasefire. If the nations around Israel stops bombing today, there would be peace in Israel. Because Israel's not going to bomb them. If they stopped attacking Israel today, there'd be peace. Because Israel is a nation of peace. They just want to be left alone. They want to be left alone to themselves and their God. That's all I want.
but we are where we're at. So now if, you, if, if this could be the end of the sermon for you, if you don't want to be offended, you need to get up and run on out now. Because I'm going to tell you, you don't, you don't have to put it on the, you don't have to ever come back. But I'm going to tell you what's going on. I believe our nation is at a, cru at a crucial point. I've said this over and over. If you go to churches where a pastor supports abortion, you need to get out of that church right now. Warnock in Georgia, they voted him in as a senator. Churches did. They're not churches. They are political machines. What I'm going to tell you this, though, is there are some black people who will love me. There are some white people who will love me. There are going to be black people who hate me. There are going to be white people who hate me. I honestly believe in 2016 that Donald Trump was to be our president. No, I don't, you don't know, there's no class, you know, I don't, I don't need that. You didn't believe, and they didn't believe it was in any way possible for him to make it. It was a long shot. When he came down, God spoke to me and he said, that's my man right there. You know who he spoke to first? Sister Schaefer. She knew it right away. If we'd had Dolly, Dolly would have known it too. The year 5777 is the year that represents the wall, building the wall. Got nothing to do with Isaiah 45, being my Cyrus. I mean, that's good for somebody who wants to build on that, and they did. The 45th president, Isaiah 40, that he would do that. But that's not got me. I said, Lord, show me. He says the year 5777 is the year of the wall. He's the only one that's talking about building the wall. He's, he's the one. I said, y'all, I don't know how this is going to happen. I said, but this is the one. Because you see, I'm looking for the sign. So you're not. You're looking black and white. You're looking Democrat, Republican. That's what you're, that's what you're, that's how, mm. And I honestly believe that God took him for a purpose. Let me tell you what the purpose is, though. Because the end time door is closing. He put his foot, God put a foot in the stop to give us some time. He's a door stop. Look here. When he shuts the door, y'all look. All God did was put his foot in the door for a little bit. And when he takes his foot out, that's what's going to happen. It's going to shut. When it came through and this man comes into office, all they did from the time he got in, if God, look here, if God put him there, and God put him there to support not you, not your black party, not my white party, he didn't put him there for us. To them. See, people, people, people think, say, when I get into it, they see, they think I'm political. Say, Listen here. All I can tell you, I voted for them every time because I just believe that would be it. If you get, some, you get somebody up there that says they're going to trust God, they're going to be a Christian, and they're going to support biblical marriage, and they're, gonna, and they're a Democrat, I can vote for them. If you go, if you go to do the Bible... I can support anybody. 
I don't care what tag you are. So was there a little bit, a little bit in, his, in his tenure there, he recognized Jerusalem, not Tel Aviv. He recognized Jerusalem as the capital, the rightful capital. Somebody, y'all hear, y'all don't understand, he's fulfilling biblical prophecy. Do you know this administration said what they were going to do was move it back to Tel Aviv. Isn't that crazy? Wanting you to go back. Are you all right now? This is all right. Are you all right? But it doesn't matter whether you're in agreement or not. It's truth anyway. It doesn't matter whether you agree with me. I'm telling you the truth. Did he not recognize Israel, uh, Jerusalem as the capital? There it is. And everybody else don't want to recognize them. And now you understand what's happening right now? We have a president. I got the video on my thing. Are you supporting Israel now and what they're doing in Gaza? And he won't give an answer. He went over there and he talked to Bibi and he said to him, Netanyahu, he said, we're with you. And I need to know you're with me. Are they concerned about food? Guess who they are giving food to? They're, they're, building, they're building ports in to the Gaza Strip so ships can come in and they can fund the people with Hamas. You know, that's our, that's our government. You know that? I'm, I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to tell you about something's going to happen Monday. And you best understand why God's going to talk to us. It's bigger than what you know. They are supporting them, and, and they are, our nation is pulling back the support from Israel. And they're going to make them say, you need to stop. And when they say stop, that means all the funding, all the money, all the food stops because they're there all by themselves. And that's God's way. They'll be there all by themselves. They've been there all by themselves a lot of times. So what's coming and how our government and what media did to this man, if God used him, who was that? Was it Harry Truman? Was it Harry Truman? Do you know who Harry Truman is? Wasn't he, wasn't he a president? Didn't he come after Eisenhower? Then it was Harry Truman. Do you know what they used Harry Truman for? God used that president for? Do you know what they used him? God, you know what God used him for? When they found out in May 14th, 1948, that Israel had come into Jerusalem to fight and take over their, their land, and they were fighting for it. And it had already been declared by the United Nations that land would be carved out for Israel, and they had to fight for it. Harry Truman in the White House. And they said, if you don't help us, it will collapse around us. They will destroy us. Harry Truman says, all the forces of the United States will be there to help assist Israel. And the nation was established in a day. God used Harry Truman. And I think he was a Democrat. And one day, God used that president. So now we have a man who's running again. And in 2017, they lied, 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 lied. And now, listen here. Listen, y'all look at this here. All the things that he's facing now, If he is being used, and you're treating him that way, oh, brothers and sisters, it's not good for us. I 
I'm just letting your mind go real slow. See, this is here. I'm a pastor. Some people call me apostle. White people have that problem with apostles. Pastors. You've got a problem with a pastor. Evangelist, pastor, teacher. Or what do we want to call me? I know I'm called to my office. This is an office. I don't need no clap. I don't need no clap. You can say a lot against me. But if you touch me with your tongue, go ahead. Go ahead and touch me. I may not know it. may not see it. You may come against the ministry. Well, brother, so it's just better for you to say, God will handle it. Then it, is, then it is for the media, the media, and the political assignment that's against the man who declared Jerusalem as the capital. It's bigger than you know. Say, I see things just a little different than you do. It's not a white thing. It's not a black thing. It's an Israel thing. And you best get your theology right about Israel. He who touches Israel touches the apple of my eye. Okay, so in our class, I say things in our class that I don't say nowhere else. It is recorded for purposes just like this. I've said it now. I didn't hear Joseph Z say it. I didn't hear none of them say it. They didn't even get it right. Even when the 2020 election came, because of the dream that God gave me in 2018, I knew he would not be president. All the prophets said it. Pastor Henry goes, mm -mm. God didn't show me that. What he showed me in 2023, that that man will not be president in 23. Do you hear what I just said? And the, all the prophets got it wrong. Some of them aren't prophesying no more. And those who got it wrong, you're still listening to them. So you ready? You want the rest of it? Do you want the whole load? Yeah. So they talk about this 20, 24, October 8th eclipse. April 8th, 2024. Tomorrow. They talk about the cities of Jonah, of all the cities of Jonah. They talk about the other one, Salem. Let's hear. You know, they even talk about this here. You know, they talk about the one that started in 2017 in Oregon and went all the way out, like Fort Sumter and Charleston, that that's where the Civil War started. They say that the one that's coming tomorrow, that when it hits Texas, it's where the Civil War, the last one buried the last flag of the Confederate Army, was buried in Texas, and that's right where it starts to come across that. Where it ended, where it started, and where it ended. Many are calling for civil war. They're thinking civil war in America. Civil war against whites. Civil war against blacks. Civil war against, listen here, since the north, the South, blue states, red states, Hispanics, civil war. That's all the devil wants. But it's not matter what devil wants. It's the sign that God's trying to show us because you have been listening. You start putting the signs together. He starts sweeping across the nation from where the civil war ended all the way going back up to where who started it, the ideology. You ready? A lot of things about this, about this solar eclipse. Many people talk about Nineveh. They talk about Nineveh. And they say all along there are cities of Nineveh that God is trying to call the nation back to repentance and seeking God. Let me tell you the story of Nineveh real quick while you're not watching your clock. 
Nineveh was a wicked nation. Nineveh was so wicked that what the Assyrians would do, the Assyrians would do is that what they would do, they would go into a city, a nation, and they would take over a city where they would kill thousands of people. They wouldn't bury the bodies. They let the bodies rot. They put them in wagons. They rolled them with them. They rolled them with them. And then they went to the Israelite cities. And then they would take the bodies of the dead that was putrid, that was rotten. And they would start stacking bodies at the foot of the wall. And they stacked body after body after body after body. They would stack the body so high of the dead that they had gotten from other cities of the putrid bodies and they were sling dead bodies over into the wall to hold cover and when they got enough bodies stacked high enough then the Assyrians came and they went over the wall walking up on the dead bodies they were wicked wicked and God told Jonah to go to a Gentile nation. He said, I'm not going. Look how wicked they are. He said, go, Jonah. Go. Jonah goes, and many who study this out says that at the time that Jonah went, or right at the time when Jonah went, that there was a solar eclipse over Nineveh. This is how they study the time out. Jonah come and preach him. 40 days judgment. That's all he said, 40 days judgment. Many people are saying this right here. From October the 8th, 40 days judgment. Just tell me what they say. April the 8th, what did I say, October? April the 8th, 40 days judgment. Well, it could have been April, October too. Judgment. 40 days. That's what they say. So all of a sudden he goes, he preaches, everybody repents. And that's, the, that's, what, that's what everybody is wanting to say, turn to God, turn to God, let's repent, turn to God. So Nineveh did. But right after Jonah in your Bible is a little tiny book. It's called Nahum. The prophet Nahum. 150 years after Jonah's time, God sent Nahum to Nineveh. You know that. 150 years after Nineveh, after Jonah went, your Bible records Nahum going to Nineveh and saying, you want me to go do what? And he went to another generation and declared, judgment if you don't turn to God and that time they did not return to God and God destroyed Nineveh and it doesn't even exist anywhere so here's the question now after everybody's done said their Nineveh thing I'm going to ask you this question here was August 21, 2017, was that our Nineveh moment? Was that our Nineveh moment? And God is bringing the second one now to let you know. This is your Nahum moment. Same thing, though. Same proposal. Same proposal. You can repent or judgment. You can repent or judgment. It's your choice. I say tomorrow was going to be a good day. I'm excited about it. I don't know what God's going to do. But I also know this here is that, 
And the point that I was going to tell you is that there was a time, this is the revelation God gave me to come out here to put the cap on the end of the sermon. You ready for the cap? When Jesus was crucified on the cross, let's talk about earthquakes. You want to talk about earthquakes? He was crucified on the cross. What happened? God sent an angel, ripped the veil. Now, I, want to, I want to tell you, this is, this is so cool because I, I was just reading for And when Jesus died and he was in the tomb three days, right when he got ready to roll the stone away, guess what happened? It was recorded. It's in your Bible. An earthquake shook the ground and the stone rolled away. The angel was dispatched to do some work into the earth. God said to me to tell you, when the earth is shaking and the earthquake's happening, my angels are at work. Look for the sign. Look for the sign. A lot of earthquakes, a lot of earthquakes, a lot of earthquakes. But look for the ones that point to him. Lebanon is a sign. The one tomorrow is going to be a sign. Stand with me in the house of the Lord. Now you can look at your watch. If you like, go right ahead. Somebody tell me what time it is. Sister Schaefer, do your head like that. We all know what that means, don't we? Y'all know what that means, everybody? It's a secret sign that Sister Schaefer and I have. You don't never know it. You see that right there? Everybody do it? That means it's time to stop, Pastor. I look for that sign. Somebody shout Amen. So here's a, is real simple. I'm going to do it like this here. We'll give an altar call. Let me make sure I, let me do my inventory check. Lord, did I say it all? Did I say what you want me to say? Did I miss it and leave anything out? Here's the thing. You're here, you're not a Christian, or you're away from God. I'm not frightening, frightening you. This is not a frightening sermon to frighten you. It's where you need to be at with God. Come to the front. I'm going to pray with you. Real simple. Come. Come. Listen, I'm not like the rest of them. I don't beg you to come. You know where you need, you know where you, if you, you know if you're not where you're supposed to be at, come. Come. Okay, you ready? Now you're ready for this one here? That, that's for everyone who wants to get saved. You can get saved right now. Let's do it. Those who are listening over the internet and the radio, say it like this here. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. I make you Jesus, my Lord and Savior. I don't know what's coming, but I know that you are the one that's holding me. And I put my life into your hands as I serve you, Jesus, all the days of my life. Your blood atones for my sin. Thank you, Jesus. And now you're ready. This is for God's people. You don't have to worry. And you don't have to be in fear. The message is not a message of fear. God said, when you see the earthquakes, my angels are at work. <laughs> see, and I read that. Listen here, that wasn't even, I just read that as I flipping my Bible through there. As I'm, as I'm coming out, he said, you tell them. I dispatch angels to do certain jobs at certain times. And how you know they're there, I shake the earth. Look for the sign. Isn't this cool stuff? We could write a book about this. What do you think? Huh? We could write a book on this little bit of stuff right here that God gives as revelation. I hear the word worry. I hear the word worry. Worry is a spirit. Worry is caused by fear. 
Worry. What's going to happen? Worry. Set it home in the dark. Uh-uh. That ain't going to happen. Somebody shout amen. amen. No, we ain't set it home in the dark. Amen. We're going to be out talking about the business of the kingdom. Say, I come out of agreement with the spirit called worry. You can't have me no more. I done heard too much that God is at work and he's got good things for us. Lord, we support Israel. You better tell him. I don't care what they're doing. I support your righteous movement in Israel. And until the appointed time when you say that the tribulation begins, we're still going to support Israel all the way. They might turn against them, but I'm not. I'm not worried about it. Say, I'm not worried. You ready? We're going to call out a spirit of worry. You all right? You all right? We're going to call it out. Someone said, I don't want to worry no more. Come on up here. Say, I don't want worry no more. I want you to get out of me. You hear me worry? They don't want you no more. So you ready? Say, in the name of Jesus, I bind the strong man in every person. Any spirit that came in this place, not of God, we command you to leave. Jezebel, you're not wanted here either, so out you go. You hear me worry? They don't want you either. Come on up, worry. Come on up, worry. Come on up, worry. Only you know if you're worried, I don't know. Come on up, worry. Say, I worry. Give up my right to God's people. And I go now to the pit. Come on out, worry. Just breathe. Come out, worry. Just breathe. Come out, worry. Breathe. Come out, worry. Just breathe. Come out, worry. Breathe. Come out, worry. Come on out, everybody. Come on out, worry. You can't have them no more. Come out, you spirit of worry. Worry about the eclipse. Come on out, everybody. Come on out, worry. Say, get out of me. I'm not going to worry about this no more. Come out, worry. Come out, worry. Come out, worry. Out. 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 Come out, fear. Come out, worry. Come out in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, it's going to be a good day tomorrow. Go to uh, WUCC 99.9 FM about 10 o'clock tomorrow. I think we're going to be at the radio station. We're going to do a live broadcast over the Internet and over the radio about the solar eclipse. Somebody shout amen. amen. Thank you, everybody. It's been my pleasure. I hope you enjoyed it today. Bill, thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Been good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. If you're here for deliverance today, you're going to see Sister Donna immediately after service. She's going to take you uh, to the room and get you set up. <laughs> Amen. Just want to remind you again, uh, there'll be no services here this week. Now, they will be doing, you know, they do have deliverance scheduled already through the week, but there won't be any services through the week. So I uh, want you to come back next Sunday, ready to go. And until then, I want you to just trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's pray and we'll be dismissed this morning. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message that was brought to us. God, that we don't need to worry about what's going to happen in the next day or so. God, we're just going to lean on you, trust you, Lord, and look for uh, your blessings, Lord Jesus. We ask you to be with us, take us home, bring us back to the next point in time. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen, amen. God bless you. Come back next time.